So good morning. Um, I would like to uh, thank IFAS for having me here today and also for the financial um, support that uh, allowed me um, to conduct my field research. Thank you very much. Um, also, um, I would like to thank you on um, Camille uh, and uh, Mr. Adrien Delmas and uh, I'd like to greet you also on behalf of uh, Professor Dominique Darbon and uh, Professor Michel Kahn. Uh, so I'll open, um, I'll open with a recent story that I think illustrates quite well um, my study. Carnival is celebrated in Kelimani during six nights every February. This year the festivity risked not to happen because Ambizia had been hit, had been devastated by floods. Um, there, was no, there was no setting for such a festivity. But Manuel de Araújo, the mayor, decides to um, mobilize people to a special carnival. He calls it the Carnival of Solidarity and uh, uh, people are invited to contribute, whether through cash donations or by giving whatever they could, clothes, blankets, whatever. And um, at the opening speech, the mayor says, Celebrating Carnival is a tradition in Kiliman. It is our way of saying, not even the force of nature uh, is capable of breaking this amazing spirit. Thrilled, a citizen shouts, Mr. Mayor, we love you. You are our fruit, you are the root of our city. So this example uh, shows a strong and clear appeal to a set of common values, including resistance, force, and tradition. So I'm here to make the case that although Zambia is one of the most complex provinces in Mozambique, there is a common identity that transcends ethnic, religious, social, and cultural differences. Such identity translates the way Zambia see the world and how they conceive their place they should occupy in power. Um, so for the purpose of our study, um, an identity is a narrative that is socially and historically constructed. It provides a logical narrative that explains the present in light of historical facts interpreted in a way that makes sense to people who share a common feeling of belonging. Um, so to address um, my topic, the resistance might be joyful. I study of some business political identity through carnival and elections in Kilimani district. I propose to begin with an overview uh, of the region's historical past, for it constitutes the foundation of this regional narrative. Um, I'm, I apologize, but I'll go through history very quickly and rather simplistically, uh, because I just want to draw the overall background. Then I'm going to talk about my study more specifically, the questions I asked, the findings I've made so far. And as it's a master's research, and taking into account I had nine weeks in total in the field, uh, I decided to limit to Kilimani district in this first study for realistic purposes. Uh, finally, to conclude, I'll, um, I'll go to, through the field work itself, so the methodology, uh, the difficulties, how it was to research on carnival, and I will conclude with a series of portraits that try to, gu to grasp the identity through images. Um, so, um, we might say Mozambique uh, stems from an heterogeneous colonial space to the extent that Portuguese had an uneven presence in the territory, both uh, in terms of time and purpose. Um, that is a first colonial age of mercantilist capitalism, uh, colonialism combined with settlement uh, policies as of the beginning of the 16th century, followed by the 19th century colonial capitalism. So Zambia was reached by the Portuguese at the uh, end of the 15th century, uh, thinking there was gold and silver in the region, um, Portuguese established a base in Kilimani in 1544, uh, beginning one of the oldest settlements in Mozambique. There they implemented a system called prazos, that literally translates as term or period of time. So prazos, uh, the prazo systems consisted of court diaries, um, that were granted to settlers and the contracts of infantiuses for the period of three lives in the feminine descent. So this system promoted the contact between African peoples, Portuguese from India, Africans, um, that uh, contributed to the formation of a very mixed society, both physically and culturally. So the early Portuguese presence also included the presence of uh, Dominicans and Jesuit missions. 
uh, that educated many of those who would become the assimilados. So Zambezia formed a society composed of masters, of uh, uh, slaves, of the famous donors, so these female prazo holders, very powerful women that uh, deserve a very good feminist study. Um, three different types of mestizos, of mixed people, um, three different levels. One, some that would be the sons of a black father and a white mother, but a black father that was probably a soldier and never came back to Mozambique again. A second type of mestizo that would be a white father living in the cement city who would visit the family during, uh, during the night and uh, um, a more regular family um, all living in the same house, the three different layers of mestizos. Um, and also there was a, a very interesting um, type of um, slave called Ashikunda. They were slave soldiers. They had a different hierarchy. They, uh, they had the right to own uh, their own slaves. So um, a Mozambican researcher called Sergio Shishava, he did a study in which he affirms that uh, the specificities of uh, uh, Zambezia's colonialism, namely the Brazo system, the miscegenation, and the presence of Jesuits, led to the formation of a society that would not adhere to the liberation war. According to Michel Cain, uh, they did not join the liberation war, the anti-colonial struggle, not because they were not in favor of Mozambique's independence, but because they did not conceive Mozambique as a project of Frelimo. Uh, coming back to Shishaba, he says that we must understand this conflict as a conflict between two uh, elites from two different generations. So an elite that arose at the beginning of the 16th century versus an elite that arose in the 19th century when uh, um, Portuguese moved the power to the south of the country. Um, so uh, the no support of Zambezia to the liberation war led the region um, to be subject to a series of stereotypes such as being elitists, racist, regionalists, etc., that were translated into hostility and stigmatization against the province after independence, which strengthened the identity narrative even more, uh, both in relation to the perceptions and visions had about themselves and the perceptions the others had about them. Uh, they were seen as a non-liberated zone for they would still be ideologically colonized. When Samora Machel did his great march from Rovuma to Maputo, he stopped by Kenimani and he gave a very tough speech in which he said the Zambezians had chicken's heads. Clayton can confirm that to me. Zambezians had never forgotten it and uh, they were very, very much blessed by it. So after independence, Zambezia went to a very strong economic decline and Zambezians blamed Frelimo for it. I'm not here to make the point if it's true or not that there was a deliberate action to ruin the province, but what I can affirm is that this permeates the, the local imaginary. People really believe on that. And uh, Ferilimo's nationalist project that uh, Michel calls nationist project because uh, uh, it denied uh, all the ethnic and religious realities that existed to form a nation that um, never existed before is strengthened even more um, this opposition through uh, their policy that um, uh, had the motto one nation, one people, one culture, and all one part. So instead of undermining this ambition identity, it all made the narrative stronger by placing Frelimo as the force that uh, would deny and fight against the wealthy to which the province generally belongs. Uh, so not surprisingly, a large part of Relamo's social base set in Zambezia, which turned the province into one of the bloodiest stages during civil war. Zambezia um, was extremely implicated in the 60-year long civil war, and it said that more than half of its population was directly affected, uh, and Reno occupied half of the province's territory. Um, and during the war, really, we sa it said, uh, not to have spared civil population intentionally uh, in an attempt to uh, totally destroy Zambezia. So as of uh, the first pluralistic elections, Zambezians consistently vote for the opposition, more specifically for Hinamo. Shishava says that uh, this vote is a direct consequence of the province's marginalization by Felimo, but also rooted on a long-term 
past that shaped this vote that he calls an autonomist vote against what Mozambique is, which made him call Zambezia uh, the rebel province. Uh, but it's important to stress that this uh, rebel, this adjective rebel, it does not apply only to the relationship Zambezia entertain with uh, Frelimo, but with any power that would deny the region's importance. They felt the same way when um, Portuguese moved the capital to Lourenço Marx in the south. So based on the assumption that the vote for the opposition uh, in Zambezia is the political expression of this strong regional identity. The first question I ask it is whether this identity is still pertinent today, and in which way? Um, do, are they still grounded on this wealthy historical past, or are new elements have nourished this uh, identity narrative? If yes, where do we see the manifestations of this identity? Is the Zambesianity today a mere transmission of a narrative grounded on this distant glorious past, or has it been renovated, including which elements? And if we consider the identity as a construction, who mobilizes this identity today and what for? So in a single question, to which extent does the regional feeling reverberate at the current political scenario, and how can we assess that? So to try to answer that question, we look at, at municipal elections in Kelimani and Carnival as well. So fast forward to 2011, Kilimani elected a mayor from the opposition, Manuel Jaraújo from MDM. It was the second city uh, to vote for uh, a mayor from the opposition, which I called a feat because the electoral system is very much subject to strong control by Frelimo. So this election, it was quite atypical because it, it was what they call intercalary um, elections because the former president, uh, the former, um, they call it the president, the former mayor had resigned over corruption scandals. We, I'm not going to enter into the details of this uh, resignation, but we might, we might talk about that later. But Manuel ran against uh, Lourenço Lubacar, a Muslim from Frelimo, and won with 62.28% of the votes. So based on the interviews I made of the field, I believe that he was elected for two main reasons, his mother and his personal prominence, uh, both converging to a vote that was granted in name of Zambesianity. So Manuel's mother, she was a teacher. Uh, has very respected and known by other families, which is imperative in Kelimani. She had a very strong appeal amid the older population. And as to Manuel, although he comes from a modest family, he excelled academically and financially. He became a PhD in UK, uh, and he's one of the main businessmen investing in the region, notably uh, through a luxury resort this picture um, was taken in his resort, actually. Um, so, um, the, uh, the, the, um, he's very admired by uh, his prominence, by the younger population. And he's, he's then seen as someone who could bring the development into the city. So, in short, he represents the son of the land, uh, who has never forgotten his commitment towards the region and promises to take Zambezia bear back to where it belongs, to bring back, back their dignity and he says that literally. So to affirm that, he mobilized uh, the regional uh, narrative so as to make electors identify themselves with him in this common quest to recover in the region's grandeur. So uh, in order to do that, he played the Schwab card. So although Zambezia is very heterogeneous, as I said, Kiliman is predominantly Schwab. So one of the ways he used to mobilize the identity was to campaign in Schwabu language. So the slogan of his campaign that I'm totally incapable of pronouncing in Schwabu means this world belongs to home, to us. Who rules in here? That's us. Um, so um, where the world is, clear, is clearly a metaphor for the region, for the province, and talking in Schwabu during a uh, political speech has a very strong sentimental appeal and uh, really delimitates the world uh, he's talking about. So he, li he highlighted as well the opposition to the other. During, ele during elections, he did a speech in which he said, we, citizens of Kelimani, are very proud because we managed to survive. We survive for we are the sons of this land. We survive because we are the owners of ourselves. We survive because we are the owner of this city. We survive because we overcome the setbacks the government of the South 
try to impose on us because we are really from Kenny Money and we will always be from Kenny Money. We Kenny Money, we is a business. This time we want to govern our city. So this was also a, a quite a Gloria Gaynor speech, I think. We, we, sir, we will survive. But anyway, the other very important thing he did was riding a bike. Uh, amid other things, Kenny Money is very famous for it bikes. Uh, there are tight bikers everywhere. And the tradition says that when a Zambian is born, he receives three things. A palm tree, for it represents the root. Uh, a bike, because a man needs transportation. And a radio, because usually uh, when people fall in love, they send messages on the radio. So this way, a typical Zambian will uh, have his bike, uh, to which he will attach a radio, and he, uh, in which he'll take uh, his woman, his wife. Uh, so um, uh, Manuel did, um, uh, did use it and uh, rode a lot of bikes. And uh, there is a sociologist called Carlos Serra, and he says that elections in Kelimani are won by those uh, with the taxi bikers. And uh, uh, Manuel did it very, very well. So um, also in relation to this other, in a press conference, he said that people were confronted with two options that uh, were radically opposite. They could uh, vote for Frelimo, uh, vote for the disrespect of their identity, or voting for him, the valorization of the local's identity principles and values. Also during the carnival, in his speech, he says, we started the movement ourselves, I mean the movement of asking we don't need to wait for the others, and the others, of course, is talking about the central government, which is Frelimo. So surprisingly, or not, 50% of Frelimo's uh, members who registered to vote, voted for him. Uh, which seems to corroborate the idea that, one, the vote for the opposition uh, is today really based on the person, not really on the party, and it's thus the political expression of Zanzianity. The same, uh, the same way the identity transcends the ethnic uh, uh, differences at the cultural level, it goes beyond party affiliation when it comes to politics. And the second thing is that this rebelliousness is such an important characteristic among Zambians that even Filimo members act differently within the party when it comes to Zambia. Uh, it, it said that in the parliament there are four benches, Filimo, MGM, Henamo and Zambezia. That Zambezias would actually um, have a stronger commitment to the region than uh, the commitments they have to the party. So, um, so I talked about uh, rebelliousness, but uh, the values. I haven't talked much about the values shared uh, uh, by this common narrative, and this includes, of course, the resistance, the rebelliousness, for sure, but also irreverence, beauty, uniqueness, freedom, and joy. And the carnival is the perfect translation of the joy uh, that characterizes Zambesians and it's one of the most powerful contributors to the transmission of those values. The manifestation of politics can take place in different forms that are not necessarily oral and that go through cultural codes. To describe carnival a little bit, it's held during six nights um, every February, uh, two sets of Friday, Saturday and Sunday. There is no study there. It has never been studied, so it was very difficult to retrace its origins. But I could identify three um, different phases. A first phase that I, I somehow call um, decentralized, capitalistic, and political. So the first phase, it was um, an individual person that would uh, make a mask out of uh, local products and would go to every house dancing, singing, and asking for money. Uh, people would give money, uh, watch the dance, and then the neighbors would follow this person. So it happened within uh, each neighborhood, and there was no competition. Uh, then, in the 50s, um, lots of companies started sponsoring uh, carnival groups, and carnival was organized by big clubs. It's the moment in which carnival became really famous, and it really uh, had a very big mix of people from the periphery that danced in the group together with people from the elite. Um, that's the moment in which uh, this um, nickname, Little Brazil, really emerged um, and people started identifying themselves uh, with Brazilians. <clears throat> uh, at that time, it is said that uh, uh, Kenny Money, Nice, uh, and Brazil uh, had the most famous uh, carnivals at the time. 
But then, at independence, Carnival stopped. Um, Carnival stopped because uh, it was seen as an elitist festivity, a class celebration that the revolution uh, would not uh, support. So this, this, this little Brazil thing showed more identification to Brazilians than to the Mozambicans. Um, likewise, the night, all the night balls, for instance, had to stop. They were seen as being linked to the colonialist mentality. So any such celebration should take place, for instance, during the day when there was light and carnival celebrated during the night. No music was allowed after 8 p.m. So um, carnival continued isolated in some neighborhoods, but it really lost its folks. And then it really becomes political in 99, when the city halls decides not only to restore carnival, but to pay for it. So uh, the economic scenario had changed dramatically, and uh, the poverty uh, was and is substantial. So, um, the, so the, the city hall decides to fund all the groups, and it's important to say that at this, the mayor at this time, Pio Matos, the one from Peru who resigned, uh, he uh, also had the same identity appeal. So he's passionate about uh, Zambezia, and some would even speculate that he would have uh, been thrown from the power because he didn't stand the concessions uh, the party asked him to make anymore because he was very, very committed to the city. But that's mere speculation, as to speculations as well. He said to have voted for Manuel de Araújo himself because when Araújo won, he made a speech in which he said, I'm leaving, but the city will be governed by someone from here and who loves the city. So anyway, uh, the carnival has a totally different composition now. It was uh, called uh, as an elitist carnival. Now it is totally uh, popular. It really privileges people. It's very popular with a massive participation of people living in the periphery. If I might say, operating as an in inversion right, as an inversion ritual, it does not only bring periphery to the center, but it also puts the region to the spot under the spotlight. So the region dominates the social scene where it plays its own existence, as if the glorious days were back for a few nights. So the first political aspect is rather obvious. Being funded and organized by the city hall, it brings about electoral dividends. Wisely, Manuel de Araújo included Carnival in his political manifesto, promising to invest in Carnival even more, um, which his opponent didn't do. Actually, he was Muslim, and uh, uh, he indicated that he would not support uh, Carnival even uh, anymore. And uh, wisely, uh, Manuel de Araújo took advantage on that. Um, so um, this first political company, uh, uh, component is very evident to citizens as well, uh, but it's welcomed by them. It's not seen as any, anything negative. Someone told me, people might have nothing to eat for 11 months, but, they, but then they forget about it all, it all once they celebrate carnival for six nights. But I think it's much more than that. Uh, maintaining the best and the biggest carnival in Mozambique, as they put it, um, is a metaphor for the greatness and virtuosity. Therefore, it's a form of resistance that so peculiarly characterizes uh, Zambesians. Ana Isabel Xavier, a woman from the elite and who organizes this carnival, I think I have um, <coughs> her quotation in here, she says, we've been forgotten, but well, here we are. The carnival shows the nature, the force, and the courage of Zambesians against all and against everything. <coughs> so the second component that makes Carnival such a relevant political object, I think, is uh, the fact that it operates as a channel that magnifies the Zambesians in an integrating manner while conveying their fundamental values. A newspaper supplement said, um, the Carnival of Kelimani magnifies and exalts the Zambesian souls best. Uh, Carnival has this integrating uh, and um, unifying effect that nourishes the regional pride Everybody becomes Zambesian or Schwabo for those few days. It fraternizes. Uh, the same journalist wrote about their, uh, the way they dance samba. He says, it converts itself into a little bit of Brazil that refreshes and regenerates. And uh, that's why I used the word real before, because you can see the, the, the paper it plays in refreshing the Zambesian society. Uh, the way, for instance, they dance samba 
is very different from the way they dance it in Brazil. So I asked people to describe their rhythm to me. So everybody evoked evoke absolutely the same adjective, joyful. Uh, but they also said flippant, irreverent, rebellious. Uh, Denis Constamartin reminds us that reason and emotion mix in every political setting. So banners all over the city, they display that the Carnival of Kelimani is the best and the biggest in the country, maybe in uh, the entire Southern Africa. So it is precisely this affectivity, this pride of hosting the best and the biggest carnival um, that at an electoral level leads Kelimani people to vote for someone willing to prove that it's not just their carnival that is the best and the biggest, but the province as a well. whole. Mm -hmm. When they say that our carnival is the best and the biggest, they're actually saying we are the best and the biggest. And a mayor that acknowledges that is someone um, who can really represent them. Um, the son of the land is the best and the biggest. His uh, nickname is Manu Manu, and Manu is, uh, uh, translates as uh, brother. Uh, Manu Manu, he embodies this commitment towards the region's development and will bring uh, the wealthy days back, setting Zambia free. Many people say that uh, uh, his uh, advisors compared him to Moses, and he says that he will set Zambia free. Um, so that's that's why the role that's why the, the the role carnival plays in the transmission renewal and is strengthening of this identity construction. Um, and uh, to use a uh, uh, terminology from the Nicos de Martin, who inspires me very much, uh, we can say that carnival is an opinion, a objet politique non identifié, a non identified political object. And the fact that the mayor so wisely uses uh, carnival for maintaining his power puts him, I think, as the main identity entrepreneur in Zambia today. Um, so, going to our uh, going to the field work itself, um, we use a semi-directive individual and group interviews with a qualitative approach. Before getting to the field, uh, I didn't expect to uh, research carnival. Carnival was not a uh, an object for me. Actually, carnival was the means I was going to use to penetrate the field. So I wanted to use carnival to ask people questions like, tell me about carnival in the old days, how was carnival in the 70s, what's the difference of carnival before and now? So I wanted to get people to talk about the war, uh, to talk about Filimo. I, I wanted to evoke this type of memories. But once I got to the field, uh, I realized that it was a very, very strong political object and a subject in its own. So I had some advantages and some difficulties. Uh, the difficulties was, um, the main difficulty is the fact that it has never been registered or recorded or documented. So it was very difficult to retrace its origins. Um, the oldest people I talked to celebrated carnival in the 50s, but almost all of them told me, oh, I started celebrating when I was very young in the 50s, but my parents did so, my grandparents did so. And as it has never been documented, uh, the old people, most of them died, and the stories died with them. So it was really very difficult to retrace its origins. But I will go back to Kelimani and I will try uh, in February and I will uh, try to retrace uh, as much as I can. So this was the most difficult thing, not having pictures to show people and ask them to talk about it, not having seen it, not me myself having an image of what it was like so I could interact with people. But the easy part was, I think, the fact that uh, I am Brazilian. So uh, and not only Mozambicans, but uh, Many people in different countries believe that um, uh, in Brazil we celebrate Carnival 365 years a day and it's the country of Carnival.